You have heard of a guy. You have heard of a hard working guy who just finished their rough day at the office and has nothing exciting to do and gets an idea, you know, to maybe play chess against some random opponents online to win and regain maybe some daily dignity. What do you think? Do such players enjoy the game? As long as it serves their cause, as long as they're winning, love or hate for the game is not even a question, simply because the game itself doesn't matter. Here is how a bullet game looks like played by those of about 1000 rating points. Everything looks great till move 3, when the first blunder happened, then the second, this time a huge one. Now White King doesn't want to close the way out for the knight, but stands in front of their own bishop. Black is wisely getting that piece out of danger. Then we can see some serious knowledge on how to restrict the enemy pieces as well. And then, like we didn't expect it from the beginning and from these players, Black allowed White Knight to jump to d6 and deliver check. Now white is getting their rook back, but fortunately there was basically no need to do that because black resigned out of their probably disappointment. But uh, what could you expect in a bullet game? You're basically a beginner and you cannot fully really calculate even one or two moves ahead with even more time on your clock. Let's peek into their profiles to see if there is anything interesting. This is white. Although provisional, they have quite an interesting classical rating of 1600 plus. This is black, playing only bullet games, and it looks like we have the winner, the guy this video is going to be about. But before that, let's check another game, this time by players of 18 and 1900. And immediately there is a surprise weapon, 1, e3. But black surprises as well with the blunder on e5, probably pre-moved. Now, that would be marked as a terrible move in normal chess game. But in bullet one, I think even an exclaim may be granted. It works as a surprise and, um, you know, it makes your opponent be worried for their king's safety. But also you need to know how to attack and create threats. This one is a terrible decision. It is possible that c4 actually was meant to be played. We'll just take a quick look, but overall this game is full of nonsense as you can see and practically every move is a huge blunder. I will discuss what one gets from playing this kind of games, but before that, again, let's check these guys' profiles. So here is white. We can see some success with bullet and less success with blitz. Seems like they are getting worse and worse as the time for thinking increases. So they stick, I guess, with what gives them best results. And this is black, similar situation. Flat line when it comes to making any progress. Now, when someone just keeps playing and winning because, you know, it provides an instant affirmation and joy, often they do not have any complaint, any questions. Everything seems lovely, you know. But when they lose, a question like, why I'm so obsessed with bullet, seems to appear. We like bullet because we don't want to invest our time and energy in this chess thing. And above all, we can play and win more than just one game in a short time range. And then they ask again, how many games did you play until you felt like you were good? Now this how many games until, and then something, sounds like how many miles more until we are home? Chess as a mean, as a burden? I think you, you better quit then. Chess is a journey, and if you keep using it as a mean, to feed your ego, basically, sooner or later, you'll quit anyway, and even admit that you have never liked it even. Being good at chess is really cool, but you know, I cannot see that people play chess only because they are expecting to become some kind of chess giants. You know, to be completely honest, I do not have such aspirations at all. I mean, I like to win. But there is not such a goal set like uh, becoming a GM, IM, or anything rating related. I play because I like the moves, I like the art of peace coordination, 
And that's what makes me excited to explore further this game. Now, if you don't have that pure interest in chess, better ask yourself again, do you really need it? And here is another funny question, or sad, depends how you look at it. It goes this way. Should I improve my speed, my speed, by playing bullet, blitz, or stick with the rapid? Why would anyone want to improve their speed, first of all? And then, by being able to understand your own position, your own needs, and the needs of your opponent, your speed of finding good moves also improves. Those badly posed questions are basically indications that many of those who play chess do not really enjoy the game itself. I really believe that playing bullet is just a gamble, especially on lower levels where thinking process and calculation is way slower. One cannot really calculate a single line of three moves even and stay solid on their clock. You know, coaching all those players from beginner to the club level, I feel pretty comfortable claiming that bullet chess is practically not related with any of those typical chess strategies. In fact, it can severely harm one's progress. I mean, would you agree that after playing bullet games for half an hour, let's say, that you basically have a tendency to make moves without really taking account all those things you have learned before? And just imagine the effect of playing bullet for days, months even. The game transforms, you know, into something that has nothing to do with chess, but more with the strategies of surprising your opponent to consume more time. And there is the strategy of pre-moving and so on. But basically, those have nothing to do with a serious game of chess. Sometimes I suggest my students to play Blitz. Not bullet, blitz. Because most of them are simply too busy, unfortunately. And when there is an opening that we'd like to, you know, properly learn, after seeing the ideas, typical plans in our session, I suggest them to try to implement those in a real game. And it's incredibly important, you know, to do that, to implement your ideas. Incredibly important. Of course, rapid games are way preferred. I can tell you that actually, uh, back in my time, I would invite one of my chess friends to play a single, just single training game, which would last sometimes more than five hours. For most of you, that's impossible because you're probably busy. Now, those Blitz games can help you build your impression about a certain opening. What people may really do in this and that case, what to expect in other words, what kind of pawn structures you should be prepared for. At the end, it doesn't matter how much your coach insists on a certain opening, if it turns out, out of those games, that you don't feel the position, if you, you, know, you don't feel comfortable under a certain pawn structure, there is simply no point in going forward with it. Also, knowing the typical idea of, say, Rue Lopez is one thing, but applying it in a real game may show that great majority of players, if your opponents tend to deviate early in the opening and uh, push you away from the main idea, then you need to check that with your coach or use the opening explorer, what to do, you know, in that new situation. And that overall has a quick and positive effect on your opening preparation. Therefore, playing Blitz is good because it serves as the ultimate test ground for each of the openings you'd want to explore. If you are an adult improver or a young chess player trying to really learn to play and understand the game, obviously there is no benefit in playing bullet. Playing blitz may be helpful, but you should be at the level where preparing new openings really is an appropriate thing to do, which means you are by that time at least an intermediate level player. However, playing rapid games with an increment is always going to be a quality solution for every improver with a limited time for chess. I don't know if anyone is still here because, you know, I'm not showing the tricks to win in three or four moves, nor any shortcut of how to become a GM in three months. 
But if you're still watching, feel free to leave a comment and share, of course, if you think the message is worth sharing. And before you go, check this diagram taken from the Leechess database, layer database. I guess you won't be surprised by the data, but still, I think it confirms a certain symptom this video is about.